Hey guys, it's John from Iced Earth. Um, we're in Hamburg, Germany today, which is it's cool for me because this was the uh, the first show we ever did in Europe. Was here at this venue um, with Blind Guardian 20 some years ago, so it's a long time. Mark Tala, it's really killer venue, man. It sounds great in here. It's just got a cool vibe. Always a good crowd. So um, this is it. You know, check it out. Check out the stage. We're gonna we're gonna go and. Uh, back here with my guitar tech because I always get questions about about my gear and stuff so I thought that'd be a cool episode for you guys to see my guitars we can talk about what pickups are in them and whatever you know David said he's got questions that fans are always ask and he's uh, my guitar tech so we're gonna go back and talk to him now yeah one of the things I get asked about and David's gonna share some questions because he has more interaction with the fans a lot of times than I do but uh, we're gonna, I, I get asked a lot about the pickups and stuff that I use. Um, this is a, an Explorer that I had uh, RS Guitar Works customized for me. It's got uh, Lindy Fraylin True 60 pickups in it. This uh, uh, Sarah Ray painted this. She's done several of my guitars. This, I get asked a lot about this image, like if it has something to do with Metallica, because they used the uh, the Don't Tread on Me snake on on the Black album. Uh, this is actually the Gadsden flag from the American Revolution, so this has a lot of historical significance, and, which is why it's on my guitar and tattooed on my body. Um, Liberty or Death, very nice graphic Sarah did there. And uh, obviously, if you follow the band, know what this, this is all about when, when, they put, when they put two and two together here. So uh, this guitar is an amazing sounding guitar. In the studio, I used it for the rhythm tracks, but I used it with an unpotted pick up no wax this is a potted version because live with the volumes we play out we need to have some some kind of control but uh really cool sounding guitar <coughs> so a lot of times people think that I, I use ice buckers in every guitar but i don't i let the guitar determine what pickup is going to sound the best a lot of times it it'll take soldering in uh several different pickups to find the match or sometimes the gibson factory pickup is perfect it just depends on the wood and how everything matches up this is uh Road Dog, that's what we call this one, and uh, it's a it's a road warrior. This has got an ice bucker in it. It's a '58 Les Paul standard. It's a, not an original. I wish it was, but it would cost probably about three hundred thousand dollars if it was a real one. So uh, it's it's a newer uh, reissue type of thing. And then on this tour, we brought uh, the Blue Flame out. Which back in night, I got this in 1996 or 97. Troy sold it to me. <laughs> Actually, we used to work at uh, at uh, Guitar Works. And uh, yeah, this is uh, just a cool, cool sounding guitar. It, there was a time where I said I'll never take it on the road because this is the kind of shit that happens. But I caved, so it's out, getting ruined by the tour, which happens. And then we're using this uh, this this for the song Iced Earth just because it looks kind of icy and a little bit like a bass boat, but you know. Uh, ice buckers in this as well. RS Guitar Works pots, I think are in all these guitars. Yeah. So we've got their main ones. Their special pots and caps. Um, I recommend RS Guitar Works to everybody. They are a great crew of people. Um, and then the, my head here, this is a uh, custom made uh, signature head by Larry Groman. Uh, he's, I've been playing his stuff since 1990, right around the Bird Offerings album is when he built me the first amp. He uh, came out on tour when we were touring with Blind Guardian and I went to his house and that was in 1992 and we actually worked, started developing my sound. He kind of flipped out when he heard Ice Earth on the radio back on, when the first album came out and it was a, uh, it was you know, he, he contacted more sound. They called me at home and they said, hey, this guy really wants to build an amp for you. So that's uh, that's my sound. It comes comes from the, obviously from the hands and the guitar, but the head has a lot to do with it. And I use Marshall cabinets. <coughs> um, that's it. And you guys probably know my man here, Dave David. Hey, Lou. He's, uh, he's my tech. And we're trying to stay out of the red light. <laughs> So uh, we're actually, he may have some questions from fans because he sees them, you know, when I'm well, not around. And they all ask exactly the same thing. What are your strings, what gauge, what brand? And the few fans that know what picks 
you use, they all ask, do they have something special? Why are they triangle? So. Yeah, um, well, the strings are 13 through 56 Diodario. Um, and for me, all the experience I've had through the years of trying to try out different strings and stuff, um, they seem to, to handle the abuse better than a lot of the other companies. And I do abuse the strings pretty hard. Um, so, and the, and the reason I like the fatter gauge is because uh, it's it's actually for me where we tune. We're normally in E flat. Um, the uh, the response is it's quicker somehow with the bigger strings. Now, it may sound strange, but it actually for the kind of rhythm picking I do, I need the fatter gauge. Um, so that's that's it. And then the picks or Clayton's. They uh, I don't you know. I don't really know why I gravitated towards those. I started using the bigger, the bass picks a long time ago, and then I ran across Clayton's. I mean, I've been playing them for probably 15, 20 years, but um, they uh, now they're doing, you know, like a, a signature one for me. But this, uh, you know, it's just, it just works. It just, I, I don't know what it is. It's the, the material that they're made of. The, I use 1.0. I used to use 0.80s, so I went a little bit thicker. Um, but you know, they just work for my style, so I don't really have any other... I think it's also part of your sound. I mean, the, the way, I mean, I try each time during sound check to do kind of fast thing, which is never as fast as you, but it's never... That pick makes it close. Mm -hmm. If I use any other ones, it really doesn't sound the same. Well, that and that's, that's for sure, because when we were um, in the recording studio on the, one of the last albums, I was doing a lot of experimenting, and I tried picks made from bone and picks made like all different kinds of wood and you wouldn't believe the difference between a pick made out of rosewood or a pick made out of ebony or or a uh, you know whatever I mean yeah. all the different materials the different kinds of plastic so there's no doubt that that has a, a huge effect on the tone and maybe that's why when I ran across Clayton's I just kind of locked into them because <clears throat> it really works for my style of playing so and what would you suggest gear wise to a fan that wants to be as close as possible to your sound but cannot afford a Larry head and a badass Les Paul, like um, mid-range stuff? Well, I, the main thing, I think, is to get a, a, um, a set neck guitar. It should be a Gibson, if possible, um, because they work for my style. And I've played just about every guitar out there. And, I mean, there's cool guitars. that I've, I use Strats for clean stuff in the studio or a Tele or what. I've got a whole stable of different guitars. But when it comes down to the the signature Eister sound. Um, Gibson guitars are the only guitars that really respond as quickly and with the low end thump that I require for my playing. So through the years I've tried a lot of different guitars. For some reason, <clears throat> neck through guitars don't seem to work. I don't know if it's the, uh, the set neck design, what that resonates, how that works with the neck. The tilt of the headstock I think is part of it. But there's a lot of different factors in there, but I would say that's that's one place to start is to get a set neck guitar, preferably a Gibson. Um, low output pickups. Low output pickups, if you've got a high a, a high gain head. If you don't, like if you're playing like a, a Marshall JCM 800 or something like that, then I think the, the higher output pickups are yeah. good. But for me, I use very low output pickups, like seven and a half to eight and a half range, something like that. I mean, I have, you know, I have an SG that has a dime bucker in it, which it just matches that guitar perfectly, and that's a high output pickup. But it depends on the wood, and it depends on the guitar. So you can get really anal about all this and, like, overanalyze every situation. But, you know, the main thing I tell people is just find your own voice. You know, if, if the what we're doing inspires you, that's cool. But, you know, don't just listen to it and enjoy it. But find your own thing, and you'll be much better off in the end if you want to try to have a career in this business. All right? It's cool. Is that it? Yeah. Good. That's all. All right, guys. That's it. See ya.